when we made the jig, we checked that the plywood and the blocks were at exactly right angles. And so the hope is that when this is made, because all the strips are parallel, that we'll have a nice square curved piece of wood. But because we've got quite a bit to play with on the outside edges, we've got three sixteenths of an inch each side, basically. But we have got a little bit of squaring up we can do if we need to. But it's far better to get it right from the offset. Really. Now while we're doing this, obviously we can check our our lines that we drew on the strips before we started, and although they're not millimetre perfect, I'm pretty happy that we've got wood where we need wood. It's just helpful to have those lines there as a guide so you can see if something's going horribly wrong. So now we've got around to here, I think we'll just start at that end and just make sure all the clamps are coming up tight as we come to here because what we don't want is to end up clamping this and find that there's a lump and a bump there where we haven't clamped it in properly. So just As I said, we don't want to squeeze all the epoxy out and leave a, a dry joint. But we do want our bits of wood to be nice and tight. Let's see, as we tighten this one up, that one's gone slack is good. I think we can dispense with that one now. That one's done its job. That's about it, really. All the clamps are nice and tight. So we just let the epoxy do its stuff. and uh, come back tomorrow, see what we've got. Right, well, here's the glued up stem that we glued up previously. The epoxy's gone pretty hard, which is good. So all that remains to be done is to try and get the clamps off. The epoxy sticks clamps better than it sticks wood sometimes. Hopefully as it unclamps it won't move, it shouldn't move. If it moves it means the glue's still wet. But this is where the importance of making sure our jig's covered in polythene 
really pays off because the last thing you want is to have to sacrifice the jig just to get your stem off. free of the jig which is good news and peel off these blocks just grab a chisel and prise a few off Sometimes the epoxy soaks through the, the grain of the wood. You can see there that the, because the wood is porous, the epoxy is actually squeezed through the, the hollows in the grain. There's one thing to be careful of when you're taking anything off a jig or whatever when you've used epoxy. There are some knife edge, hard, dry resin lumps there, and they can slice your fingers fairly easily. So it's helpful to either wear gloves or to just go around with a little hammer and, and break off those sharp edges before you do cut yourself. Especially on the on the bottom where it's been sitting in a few little pools of resin. So that's our stem. We'd like it to end up two inches when it's been planed and we've allowed two and a half inches width in our strips. They have gone a little bit variable in their finished positions but hopefully we can plane one edge down, get it nice and flat and straight and then run it through the thicknesser to get the other side down. Hopefully this side that was down on the baseboard of the jig will be the flatter side. So we'll take a few shavings off here with the electric planer to get rid of the worst of the glue before we run it over the surface part of the planer, which has got a lovely long flat bed so we can get it it's no good having a stem that goes up and twists. So getting it flat is the first job. We use a cheap hand planer to get the worst of the epoxy off. Because the epoxy does blunt the blades of the thicknesser quite successfully. So the blades in there are due for a change anyway. Uh, we've planed a lot of planking earlier in the week and they're starting to make quite a noise when they plane wood so they're getting blunt so I don't mind just using the epoxy on them as a final thing before I change them. I wouldn't really want to put this through a planer with new blades in. So we're just going to take off the worst of the epoxy and then flatten it out on the thicknesser. We 
we can just check the flatness, straightness of our stem with a long straight edge put across the curve just to make sure one end's not doing anything too silly. That's not too bad. We'll find out in a minute when we run it over the planer. Just adjust the bed to give us a half or three quarters of a millimetre of cut. Just make sure we've got nothing dangling off our sleeves that can get caught. to nearly all solid wood there. What we will do, because it's, it is tricky to keep the stem completely flat on the bed, we'll just check it again with the spirit level. Now that looks quite good up to here and there there's just a little lip but the back edge is fine but we've just we just want to take about half a millimetre off this edge from there to the top and we can do that on the planer but it's probably just as easy to do it with a hand plane so that we can just trim that down to exactly where we want it. We're only talking about a few shavings of the plane. That feels a bit better. Just check that. By putting a, a straight edge or a spirit level across there, what we're looking for is the spirit level touching here all the way across to there. If, if the stem was angled like that, and we could see daylight under one side of the spirit level then we're not quite right. Well that's looking pretty good there now. <laughs> 